taking it from where we left yesterday okay let us revisit the nature of services in order to understand how complex it is to define service quality and measure service quality right so you recollect that yesterday we had mentioned that all services are intangible okay this intangible nature of services is one of the greatest challenge for service providing firms to make their customer realize that services has been provided for like if you go to a restaurant or if you go to a hotel room okay first you check the interior and then you go and check the toilets you will find that there is a you know paper band around the commode why that is being done just to remind you that the toilets have been cleaned properly there is a paper band ribbon okay and yesterday i mentioned that when they prepare your bed near your pillow they keep a red rose or some chocolates or some card just to remind you that we have performed the necessary service so this intangible nature of service is a, one of the greatest challenge okay to make the customers realize that certain value has been provided to him okay again yesterday we said that services cannot be stored and as a result we cannot have inventory for services in a manufacturing situation when the demand exceeds the capacity okay what do we do sometimes we resort to inventory from the finished goods inventory or a we try to match the imbalance between the demand and the capacity but in a services environment you cannot do that isn't it you cannot store anything again we discussed that in this experience economy service is an experience as a result many of the service providing firms are devising lot of strategies including forward and backward integration such that the customers they realize and and remember this memorable experience if you have visited that las vegas this roman columns you, know, you will remember that you know they make that entire environment as an experience go to those forum shops you will never forget it throughout your life if you have gone to that o'hare airport you will find that there is hard rock on the first floor classical music on the second floor and this airport parking garage itself has been you know constructed in such a way that there is no difficulty in parking your car locating your car taking it out and even you know to go inside that garage to park it and all that itself is an experience so you see how service providing firms they are rising up to the occasion to meet the challenges <coughs> you know if you if you go to this garage you know and this parking lot you will see not only the ambience but also 
the technology that has been deployed is also the state of the art. So, service operations firm they are very much particular about the deployment of the state of the art technology, the training that they provide to their employees because all these adds value and service quality is a complex network of different dimensions. In the manufacturing environment as Professor Rai was telling yesterday that many of the factors that influence the quality of a product are tangible and the common description of manufacturing quality is that conformance to the specification. Okay. But here even defining the specifications or setting standards for service is a challenge. Service providing firms are you know taking resort to various means and ways to delight the customers, eliminating negative cues, okay. Here is one scenario where you are engaging all your five senses, the rainforest restaurant. And the entire service is a package. Here it indicates simultaneous consumption as and when the service delivery is taking place and customer is an active participant. You see the attitude of the waiter is also included within the service package. Every interaction with the customer is basically called moment of truth and service providing firms are very much particular about satisfying the customers with every interactions that they have. All moments of truth should be positive. Sometimes there are psychological aspects and privacy that needs to be taken care of such that the customer feels that there has been some value added to the services provided to him, which will in turn make him loyal. He will spread through the word of mouth and that will enhance and increase the market share of the service providing firms. Okay. There are some implicit services, there are some explicit services. For example, the security of a well lighted parking lot, an example of an implicit service. Again, customers participation in the service process. from all this, what are you trying getting? Can you now tell me what are those different factors that define service quality? Because we said that the nature of services is such that the dimensions are too many. So, from all the 
pictures or the slides that you have seen right now. What is your impression? What are the dimensions that define service quality? In fact, there are services where the level of interaction with the customer is more, there are services where it is less. And if you define service as a package, then there are many activities within that service process which are back office that is outside the line of visibility. Okay. And nowadays service providing firms are trying to make that back order back office operations also transparent. Like if you now go to many restaurants in US and Europe you will find that while you are waiting for the dishes to be served to you they are showing on the television screen how your meal is getting prepared whether the hygiene has be, is being maintained or not. These are aspects which differentiates a service providing firm from the others, from their competitors. Simultaneous consumption as we had discussed yesterday makes it more challenging because if the quality deteriorates from the standard, you cannot put it back. So, recovery from that is very, very difficult. Again, certain services are like perishable products. Okay. So, coming back the main topic on service quality, what we find that in case of service, quality is a network of various dimensions. One of these dimensions is the reliability of service. Okay. What is reliability of service? Perform promised service dependably and accurately. For example, delivery of the mail at the same time each and every day. Okay. Next come responsiveness. How do you define responsiveness? Is the willingness to help customers promptly. Avoid keeping customers waiting in the queue. If you try to go to a bank, you will find now find that even State Bank of India, they have institutionalized several procedures, so that the total time taken to withdraw the cash is minimized. Even the length of the queue that used to be formed at peak hours, sometimes created lot of problems in accommodating so many customers within that room. Keeping into account the constraints of space and time, service providing firms have come out with various means and ways to help customers and in this respect Many of you who are familiar with operations research and statistical models can think of various queuing models, application of queuing theory okay, to minimize the waiting time, okay, to decide on the number of servers or the counters that will be kept open okay, 
taking into account the constraints on the space, the length of the queue should not exceed a given specified length. Okay. Even you know, they are trying to implement various queue disciplines, so that customers do not feel bored while waiting on the queue. Like say suppose you go to the state bank of India or bank of India or to withdraw your cash. Suppose there are three you know counters, you are standing in the queue in one counter, okay. you are waiting, you might feel that okay, the other line is moving fast. Okay. The moment you switch over to the other line, then you will find that array, the previous line is moving faster. Okay. So, you know, customers they get really distracted, but you know nowadays there are many service providing agencies. If you particularly go to the airport for the check-in, okay, you will find that three, four securities are there okay, and then people are coming, there is a single queue and as and when any of the security guards are available for checkup, you know they will call in the passengers. So, that way this kind of distractions are eliminated. If you go to you know some places like Disneyland or others, you will find that they remove the boredom by showing lot of animated pictures of Mickey Mouse or Shimba or other characters. Okay. Why? Because you do not feel bored and they have defined a process that seeing those animated films or pictures is a part of the visit. So, this is this is the way you know these are the challenges and these are the ways service firms they are overcoming those challenges. So, reliability and responsiveness are two important dimensions of quality being provided by service firms. Assurance, what do, what do you mean by assurance? When service firms are assuring you of some services, that means they have created a trust within you based on their credibility, the level of competence or the skills that they possess, the way they communicate with you, the way they understand your needs and the guarantee sometimes that they you know promise all these things together define assurance. Right? Empathy. Empathy means putting yourself onto other shoes and try to feel where the nail pinches. You are empathetic means you are trying to understand the pains that the customer is having. So, in order to understand that those customers, what you have to do? First of all, you have to be courteous, you have to communicate with him in the same language that he understands. Okay. You have to be a good listener and sometimes this empathy becomes one of the single factor that helps a service firm to win orders. Like there are two or three very well reputed renowned doctors, all of them are surgeons, everybody has you know established the credibility by displaying their certificates such and such gentleman has received this degree from the Royal College of Surgeons. Okay. Everybody you know they are very famous for their aim. but whom do you prefer? The doctor who smiles at you, who listens to whatever problems you have patiently, okay, very courteous 
okay, and help you feel that you are at home, you will choose that doctor. On the other hand, there may be another doctor who is equally competent, but he is very rude. Okay. On the face of it, you know, he will not listen to any other story. Okay. You say, Sarah, you know, I am having a stomach pain. So they say, oh, whenever you have problems, the stomach pains are there, do not waste my time. Okay, I am giving you the medicine. Will you go to that doctor the next time? So, that rude behavior, that cold behavior on the part of the doctor sometimes become the order losers. You know, winning in the marketplace basically depends on certain factors. First of all, you must know that there is some minimum eligibility that gives the right to a service firm to bid for any order. Like you know, when you know nowadays uh, this gentleman is working on this online websites and all, they mention whenever there is an auction and all that you must be ISO 14001 certified in order that you can bid. Okay. That is the minimum eligibility or the minimum quality that a service providing firm should have in order that he earns the right to bid. So, these are basically called service qualifiers. Okay. So, qualifiers are those attributes of a service providing firm that gives them the right to bid. But having those qualities do not imply that he will get the order. Qualify all the all the service firms that those who have bid, all of them are equally good. But what is that? that particular attribute which helps the service firm to win orders. Service winners, is it the price that you are quoting? Is it the quality? But then in today's competitive environment, price, quality are factors that are always taken for granted they cannot be the order winners, there is something extra. We will look into that aspect, what are those attributes which help a service firms to win orders. And again having all those qualities which are necessary to be a qualifier or even having certain order winning attributes certain factors which I define as order losers, service losers like the cold behavior, the rude behavior of a doctor. You have everything in you, but because of that you lose the order. So, those are very important aspects. If you are the managers, of a service providing firm you must keep in mind. You have everything, but how do I become an order winner? What, are, what is that thing? And those characteristics are not static, they are highly dynamic attributes, they vary from time to time. Today's order winners will become or may become order qualifiers tomorrow, because today, today you can win certain orders based on the price that you have quoted or the quality of service that you have provided for. But as I said yesterday that all these things can be easily imitated by another service providing firm. So, everybody will try to copy that, then tomorrow 
those order winners will become order qualifiers. So, then you need to find some delta certain extra to win orders and as a result I said yesterday that service firms need to continuously innovate to win orders in the marketplace. And innovation is not the same thing as invention. You do not have to you know discover everything new which was not there. Even something new in a new market or something some new type of service in an existing market or slight improvements or adaptations of a service given in a particular location and then being transferred in another location can be called innovation. Why do service firms innovate? Because this order winning criteria is changing dynamically. Today's order winners will become tomorrow's orders qualifiers and you need to discover what can be today's order winners. That is the challenge for a service manager and you need to find out how do I innovate. Okay. So, now tangibles the physical facilities and the facilitating goods everything that you can touch that you can see are tangibles that also makes a difference. Like the you know this environment inside this room the infrastructure and all you know will make you feel that well every time I take class in Tokyoshila this particular room is not it. But suppose the hygiene of the you know hostel or the toilets is not up to the mark then you will feel no 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 even though the classroom infrastructure is very good because of the toilet facilities because of this you know infrastructure I do not like to go there. So, that is why the entire service package is most important for a service providing manager. Like say if you are carrying a bucket of milk okay, pure milk okay, that, that has got a tremendous value, but inside that bucket of pure milk if there is one drop of drain water that entire thing gets spoiled. So, you have to be very party as a service manager you have to see that this entire package smells quality. There is stamp of excellence in that entire package, is not it? So, what are those five dimensions of service quality? How do you remember it? I am the rater of the quality just see the just write this term rater because you are rating quality. The first R is the reliability A stands for assurance T stands for tangibles E stands for empathy and R stands for responsiveness. These are certain mnemonics you know I always try to you know devise mnemonics in order to remember such attributes. You will never forget that these are the five most important dimensions of service quality. And out of that you know lot of research scientists like Professor Rai and other colleagues of mine who are working they have found out that out of that reliability is the most important compared to the other dimensions. The dependability, the promptness these things matter and as a service providing manager you have to take care of these aspects. Again what I discussed yesterday that whenever you try to receive some service from a service providing firm like say you go to a good restaurant or you come to IIT 
to learn something. You have already formed an opinion, developed some expectation in your mind about the quality of service that you will be receiving from there. And these expectations that get formed within you, these are dependent on what? Word of mouth, somebody else must have you know attended a very good workshop in IIT. So, they will say oh the you know workshops on quality conducted by IIT Kharagpur they are really very good. So, they said okay next time I get an opportunity I must visit IIT Kharagpur to experience that you know uh, level of quality. So, word of mouth is very important. Next is personal needs. Sometimes uh, you know there are lots of research scholars, good professors who are doing lots of research work okay. and nowadays you know PhD they must okay. whether you know it makes any difference or not I really do not know, but it is a must if you want to be a good teacher okay. apart from all those qualities that you have you may be a very good communicator, you might have lot of knowledges you are creative everything is there, but in order to get a job the order winning criteria is to have a PhD degree. And then there are certain research scholars they would like to know what are those state of the art techniques, what are the different kinds of researches that are being conducted in various educational institutes, how do I get an idea okay, that you know will help me to formulate my research hypothesis or even how does it help me to frame my research questions. So, for those kind of personal needs many people attend this kind of workshops because you think any subject whether it is services management or operations research or statistics is a vast is a wide coverage in two days time or in six hours, eight hours you do not learn uh, <laughs> you know even uh, one tenth of that subject. But why do people go and visit such workshops, such conferences, such seminars? There are certain personal needs associated with that. They would like to find out that even by through interactions, networking, you know listening through these lectures and all can I identify some problem which will help me to formulate my research hypothesis. So, based on word of mouth, personal needs, previous experience, okay, people develop in their mind some expectations about the service that they will receive if they go to such places like IIT Kharagpur or any other service providing firm. So, that is the expected level of service okay. and then after this two days workshop when you go back okay, at that point in time you try to think what did I receive out of these two days of stay in IIT Kharagpur. You try to recollect did I learn anything new? Is it worth spending this much amount going there spending two days apart from sightseeing you know roaming around in this beautiful garden this environment those are very important see those are those aspects are very important you know sometimes those things really attract much more compared to the interactions and the discourses within the class ok. But think you know those things are given. But inside the class what did I get so as to find out that what is the perceived level of service because I had certain expectations, I have experienced some service, I have perceived some service. So, this gap between expectations and perceptions are very important. What we have written that 
if expectations is less than perceived level of service, then quality surprise. I did not expect certain things, but I got it. I am a delighted customer. I am doing some research work in the area of service management. And the professor in IIT threw some light on certain problems, which I never expected. He also helped us in, you know, giving some approaches. Oh, that is nice. I am delighted. If the perceived level of service matches the expected level of service, I am a satisfied customer. But if the perceived level of service is less than the expected level of service, then I am dissatisfied. And every service providing firm, they try to minimize this gap, this gap between expected level of service and perceived level of service. And hence, lots of research workers, particularly one gentleman, see if you uh, go around these two departments, industrial engineering department, which is now called industrial and systems engineering and the Vinod Gupta school of management. Lots of research scholars, lots of professors, they are always those who are working in this area, services management, they will refer the name of Parasuraman. Okay? Somebody will say Jitamal. So like this, there are you know so many because these all these research scholars they are very fond of quoting references. Everything, if they write one page, there are there will be three paras. Everywhere after one statement, they will write Jitamal, comma 1990 or Parasuraman, comma uh, or Parasuraman et al. Okay, 1990. Everywhere reference. They are very much, you know, skeptical about all this. Are I have copied from this? They will call this a plagiarism and all. So they will give reference. I am from industry, you know. I am very new to this academic world. You know, I talk from what I see, what I observe from my common sense. You know. So, sometimes I have forgotten to give those references, okay. you know industry man, you know I am not bothered about these references too much. But then when I have borrowed some model from somewhere, I need to mention the name of that gentleman. So, this gap model is by N. Parasuraman okay. and this is basically called service quality gap model, which basically analyzes the differences between this expected level of service and perceived level of service. If you look at this gap model, let us see what is this gap one or the first gap. The first gap is customer or marketing research gap and you are seeing that we have basically <coughs> written here understanding the customer. Those of you who have worked in the area of systems development, systems analysis and information technology and all, you must have realized one thing that the first step as a consultant, as an analyst that you will be performing is basically called requirements analysis. Requirements analysis means you try to understand the requirements of the customer, the needs of the customer. The customer will tell you the needs and you will basically write down, okay, the customer wants this, 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 this. After the requirement analysis is over, sometimes many of these consulting firms like Accenture, Infosys, IBM and all. What do they do? They try to make sure that they have understood the needs or the requirements of the customer properly. 
So, what do they do? They engage in different types of communication with the customers, they repeat that did you ask this, did you ask this, did you ask this. So, this entire so there are different kinds of techniques also. This entire process is basically called requirement verification or verification just to ensure that I have understood it. So, there are two aspects of this one is validation and the other one is verification. Validation means I am checking back with the customer or the user that I have understood his requirements properly and verification is if I am using certain formula in that the inputs given to this is expected to deliver certain output whether that thing is happening or not. So, in the first stage with respect to this gap 1, I am trying to find out why whether I have understood the customer's requirement properly or not and how do service providing firms they understand or they gather the requirements of the customer through market research, through discourse with the customer and things like that. Sometimes in spite of the best of efforts maybe there is some lack in the power of that market research. Management may not have been able to understand the needs of the customer properly. Customer has stated something, but the management has perceived it slightly different from what the customer wants. So, this is gap 1. Gap 1 is the difference between what the customers want and what the management of a service providing firm feels that the customer wants this. So, manage the gap between customer expectations and management perceptions of customer expectations is the gap one. Okay. So, after the validation of the requirement specification what happens in a systems development environment or an IT environment? If you follow the typical waterfall methodology you will you know design, you will carry out the design in which there is something called high level design where you will be designing the database as well as the data flow or the processes. Okay. There are two tools, why I am taking this IT example because most of you must have written some programs or something like that. So, you do a high level design and a low level design in terms of writing program specifications. Okay. Those program specifications will be handed over to programmers who will be coding those programs. Here also in the services environment after the management has perceived the needs of the customer they will draw up service specifications or they will come out with certain service standards. Here the management skills and the commitment to lay down those standards is very important. Even if the management perceives the customers need accurately there may be certain gap or difference between their perceptions of the customers expectations and the way they define the standards or the specifications to address those expectations. And this gap is the design gap too. If they correctly design those standards, but you know in the services environment even setting those service standards is very difficult coming, coming out with service specifications or service standards is very very difficult and hence this design gap is there in most cases. Again 
what this conformance gap 3 implies? The program specifications have been distributed to the programmers. Now, they will be actually doing the coding, they will write the programs and then what will happen? These programs will be subjected to testing. In case of service management or in case of service operations, after the service standards have been laid down, they will now execute that process, they will deliver the service. If the employees who are working in that service firm, they are not properly skilled, not properly trained. Even if the service standards have been accurately drawn, the delivery of the services may not conform to those specifications or standards. That is the result of the, that will result in this conformance gap 3. And then there is a gap between the services that has been delivered and the perception of the customer related to that service. And you know here the managing the evidence matters because this perception again I told you that has been formed based on the word of mouth, advertisement, your personal needs, expectations and sometimes you know many service providing firms in order to win orders, in order to you know get that customer, what do they do? They promise too many things. As a result, the customers they think that well the level of service that I will get will be up to this standard but the service delivered is this much. So, if the service delivered is not up to what it is promised, there is a gap and that is basically the gap 4 that is the communication gap. As a result, if you are a service operations manager, do not ever over promise, do not promise the customer something which you will not be able to deliver unnecessarily do not raise his level of expectation. And finally, we come to this gap 5 that is the gap between these expectations and the perception. So, gap 5 is a result of some total of all these gaps, gap 1 plus gap 2 plus gap 3 plus gap 4. And you know the causes of this gap because if you if you have a powerful marketing research department, if you try to if you are skilled or trained properly in analyzing the customer requirements, your gap one will get minimized. Okay? If you have re real dedication or commitment towards designing the service standards and also experience in this, the gap two will be minimized. Empower your service delivery people, train them properly, give them guidelines, manuals, okay. make a walk through audit when the service is being delivered that will minimize that gap 3. Gap 4 will be minimized by not over promising. No, 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 service standards is basically instructions that you know these are the these are the basically you know customers want. I have perceived those wants to be like this. In order to meet these requirements, what should be the targets for each of these processes that are there? You know, these needs are addressed by performing certain business processes which are combination of several activities and each of these business processes will have certain targets or goals. If those goals are achieved, my overall needs of the customers will be addressed. Okay? Maybe during the break I will take some example and explain to you that one. Now, many of these you know 
organizations they are trying to measure this gap between expected level of service and perceived level of service. Okay. So, there are various instruments for that. Another instrument again devised by those gentlemen Parsuram, Jitmal and all. So, what they are saying that they have come out with this instrument which is called serve qual which is a service quality framework and all those you know research scholars who are working in this organizational behavior design uh, hr aspects services management aspects they are very fond of this serve qual even though iit professors they say that it's not backed up by proper statistical theories and all, but forget about that. People from industries like me, you know, my research scholars who are working in the area of services, are very fond of this serve qual. What is this? It is a framework to measure the gap between expected level of service and perceived level of service. Originally, this serve qual instrument is a survey instrument measured 10 aspects of service quality. What do they do? Suppose you know here is a service firm, I would like to measure the service quality being provided by this firm. So, I design this survey instrument which is basically called serve qual. It is being administered in two rounds. In the first round, I will go to those people who are working in those service firm, particularly at a higher level, and I said, Hey guys, out of all these 10 different aspects, okay, what are those aspects which you feel very important? Okay. But in order to remove the subjectivity against each of these aspects or scales, what they have done? They have attached certain rating scales. They may be of the Likert type 1 to 5 or 1 to 7, 5 means very, very good, excellent and 1 is not up to the mark, 3 is average. Any survey people always you know you go to any you know shop, mall and all they are conducting survey. So, against any particular scale item they will associate this scale, whereas 1 is not up to the mark service, 3 is the average level of service, 5 is excellent service. The scale can be from 1 to 5, can be 1 to 7, 1 to 9, so many things are there. So, they basically originally they you know basically used those 10 aspects in terms of the rater which I said along with that rater they added all this competence, courtesy, communication, credibility, access, security, understanding of the customer all this they and they made a okay, 10 different aspects. Okay. But then you know This gentleman again, Parsuram, what he said that I would like to make it slightly more complex because you know every profession they will use certain jargons, they will you know make things because see that is the you know habit of every you go to lawyer, say why filing up the you know simple income tax return is very complex thing for us. We do not understand those jargons, those things. Every profession, the lawyers, the doctors, the engineers, every profession, you know, they have used all these jargons and other things to show it off to other people. Look, this is a unique type of profession and it is very difficult to acquire that. So, Parsuraman said that if I only list down these 10 aspects and associate certain scale against these aspects, then it will not really uh, be very impressive to everybody. So, what he did? He first said that 
I will clap these 10 things under this 5 dimensions first return. So, what is said? He said, look, this understanding of the customer, huh, talking, showing courtesy to him, communicating with him in the same language, these are all part of the empathy aspect, right? And you see, this competence, credibility, these are all aspects of providing assurance. So, what they did? They clubbed all these different aspects under those five dimensions of rater. Okay? And when you are trying to evaluate the level of quality that is being provided under these five dimensions, you if you say please rate us on the reliability aspect, does not make sense. The industry people we do not understand what is reliability. So, what they have done? They have framed certain questions, four or five different questions which will basically imply the meaning of reliability. We stop here, take five minutes break and then come back and continue from where we leave, right?